Zahl den Einkauf, mach es klein, komm, ey, ey Rauche laut, scheiß auf dein Kraut, ey Zahl den Einkauf, mach es klein, komm, lass gleich raus Rauche laut, scheiß auf dein Kraut, jag die Preise raus Bleib im Rausch, lass die Scheiße raus, hast in meinem Bauch aufgestaut Grüß mich, wenn ich lauf, doch hör zu schleimen auf I went to Berlin because of, well, a lot of stuff that I didn't even know about. It's the sort of stuff you see in your travels, like this cool castle that I passed while on the trip. You know, I'd always heard that Germany has a really distinctive and rich cultural heritage, and it's incredible that you can see these kind of remnants of the time. Oh. Okay, ne never mind. Modern Germany is a diverse and progressive nation, and the second most populous in Europe. Sure, it has a dark past, yet it has emerged triumphant with a strong international culture, amazing food, and best of all, public drinking. I mean, you can literally drink anywhere and everywhere. I didn't record it, but on my train through the countryside, there were literally people listening to Duff music, drinking beers, and just kicking back. Like a little gather on the train. And best of all, it was like 12 noon. I've been in Germany for about an hour and already it fucking beats Australia. But what attracted me to Berlin was the cl- uh, The cl Sorry, I'm, I- I must- I must have lost my train of thought. I'm gonna kill the bay! Everybody says that Berlin has the best clubs in the world. A bold claim, I'm, I, I must say. Clearly, they haven't been to Qantas Club. I wanted to test this theory. Thus, I did some clubs before leaving my control group, Melbourne. That was definitely a party of all time. Did you know- Um, you, you probably knew. That Berlin is home to the world's most infamous nightclub, Berghain, otherwise known as Panorama Bar or Big Bad Berghain. Now this place is open for 72 hours straight, highly selective on who it lets in, and GAY! And I'm getting in. No longer would I put up with some grade 6 disco night type of party, I wanted the real thing. Hard drugs and dark rooms, techno loud enough to burst an eardrum and... Oh, uh, mud orgies. Now look, I understand, okay? I, I do. Uh, methed up mud orgies might sound a little bit too intense for the average PUSSY! To be fair, I'm kind of more of a peanut butter orgy guy myself. But the Berlin nightclub scene is a cultural phenomenon. Germany was once the conservative, celibate, Nazi powerhouse of the entire world. Fast forward just five decades and you've got the littest, most movie techno rave scene in the entire world. Of course I wanted to see the butt end of this intriguing piece of history for myself. And to only fuel my interest Further, the day before I arrived in Berlin, I was sitting in an Amsterdam coffee shop. Yeah, look, I, I know, I know, I'm cool as fuck, yeah. Where I met a wise British lad who claimed to have seen the inside of the power plant turned palace. Do you feel like it's more about attitude than about just what you wear? Alright, mate, it's a bit of both. Mm. What you're wearing and how you carry yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think, I don't yeah, know. It'd it be nice to know how it was. Yeah, the event you know. Sorry, what do you say? Now my translator told me that as long as the bouncers like you, you should be a okay. Their job is less to assess a person based off specific criteria, but more to filter out people who are coming in with the wrong intentions. People who are on lots of drugs prior to entering, people who are on their phones, tourists who don't know any German, and worst of all, straight people. And by entering, you are either going to participate in open sexual behavior, or just be boring. And thus, as a default setting cis white man, my chances of getting in were slim to none. But alas, I was hopeful. We arrived where we lined up for hours and hours, freezing in our zesty fits. My boy with the classic black mesh, me with my leopard print shirt, and the time finally came. Ladies and gentlemen, countless have tried and failed to see the inside of this elusive, exclusive club. Prepare your eyes and your ears to witness an out-of-this-world light show magnified with the state-of-the-art sound system. I sneakily took out my phone from my pocket, took the sticker off of the camera, and snapped this real video of inside the club. Are you ready? Because this might just change your life. Prepare yourself. Ready? Steady? Spaghetti!
I don't know about you, but my favorite meth hangover cure is a couple of milliliters of lavender essential oil, a chai latte, and maybe a bowl of toasted granola. But in Berlin, my options were limited. Of course, there was the option to make my hangover a tomorrow problem, but I opted to instead take a walk to clear my head. The constant overcast dulled the skyline, which I'm sure would otherwise be a colorful and vibe-stricken artist's paradise. Like the clubs, the graffiti scene was renowned as being the best in the world, and I can attest to that. Every set of stairs, every stop sign, every door, every pole, and every wall is a canvas for a city full of artists to make their mark, each trying to stand out amongst the rest. Like Clit, for example, whose tags and pieces I saw not only in Berlin but across Europe. And who could forget a name like that? It seemed, however, that unlike in my homeland, Melbourne, the relevant authorities weren't scrambling officers left, right, and center to cut down on vandalistic crime, even asking residents to snitch on graffiti offenders. Rather, the city seemed to embrace the culture of defiant graft. And guys, I think I've discovered why. Originating from the infamous Berlin Wall, which split the city into the the good side and the bad side, graffiti was used by daring artists to spread a defiant message, a message which would help to ultimately dismantle the wall, along with the control, oppression, and fear it held over the city's head. Nowadays, graffiti remains a strong part of the expression and power of the people, and who would they be to take that from them? Me and this homeless guy went together to the Berlin Zoo, which was only the second time in 24 hours where we saw creatures in an artificially made habitat throwing around their shit. We visited a completely free gaming PC lounge, and I visited some graves. Like, a very large number of graves. It's not what you'd expect that you'll discover in your travels, especially when you're in a big place for a long time, just looking for things to do to get away from your shitty hostel bed. I tried the beer, mid. I tried the clubs, lit. I saw the sights, but one thing I hadn't taken advantage of was the feeds. I started by assessing the convenience store scene, just looking for a quick snack. Oh my fucking god, what- what the f- what- OH MY GOD! I HAVEN'T SEEN THIS IN YEARS! OH MY GOD! OH MY- on the way to my trendy hostel, I spotted a nice smelling shop, which claimed to sell gemuse kebabs. Ke kebabs, it's fu It's kebabs, idiot. Amused by the funny name, I let myself in. When I found the work of my now lord and savior, Mustafa Demir. I stumbled into the short queue, barely empty, and my mind fixated on one thing and one thing oh, only. Yeah. Feed time. I scanned the menu to find a beast worthy of tackling, and decided upon the falafel imbrot. In, which falafel in bread. I was then surprised to immediately see a handsome Turkish man taking freshly fried falafels from the oil and squishing them for compactness into the sandwich, layering on aromatic onions, crispy iceberg lettuce, crumbly feta, juicy tomatoes, fucking chucking sauce bottles through the air, layering them shits on too, fucking hitting a here, a there. But all this show isn't why I came here for there's still a feed to be had. And by God, was it had. My first bite was like a housewarming party in a white neighborhood. Hello, said the onion, lettuce and tomato, all bearing gifts ranging from saltiness, balsamic sweetness and juicy texture. And my new house was the Durum wheat bread, within whose walls I felt safe, nourished, and crispy. But all of this is ignoring the falafel. It's crispy and moist soft layers in perfect symbiosis. Through salty, crumbly feta, juicy peppered cucumber, and the lot, I fought until I met my prey. I bit into it and felt at peace. And with that, all the money I'd spent on plane tickets, accommodation, and drugs had become worthwhile. Through all of the backbreaking travel, short-lived satisfaction, and the pursuit of vibes, I found my true love. Mustafa Demir's Gemus Kebab. Mwah. I must have eaten there about five times, and with each feast, whether the same falafel drum, or the chicken salad, or whatever the fuck else, I was not only nourished, but I learned something new. Like a new combination of flavors, a love I never knew for a particular food, or simply a satisfied consolidation of my experiences prior. Thank you, Mustafa Demir.